It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord and uh, be happy that, as uh, Apostle just said, that we didn't die with the corona or a virus. Yes. That's a blessing from God. That's a blessing, yes. That's, you know, that's a blessing from God. That's a blessing. Because uh, millions died. Yes. And I believe that we should have had um, uh, cheers on the outside yes. just for the fact that we can come back to get and, and glorify God yes. today. Yes. I'm going to share with me um, uh, the tent keepers. Wave your hand. I want to see where the tent keepers Okay. All right. Uh, um, don't be showing me something that we, we need to, to understand in this particular time we live in. We are happy that we have survived, but we want to make an impact. Yes. And uh, uh, two days ago, Lord was speaking with me and was sharing with me about impacting young people. Yes. Lord was saying that there is, in the churches, there is a the, the youngsters have lost their passion for the things of God. Yeah. And it's not the youngsters' fault 100%. Yeah. It's not the church need to catch up with what yeah. God is wanting to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was sharing with Barrett, my brother, concerning that. When the Lord spoke to me about, about two days ago, and uh, I happened to call him and made a mistake and called one of his, his sons, who's my good friend. <laughs> and, <laughs> their, their, their names are alike. Yeah. So I. Uh, I began to talk to him about that. But the idea is, um, our youngsters uh, are going after lots of well, education. We want to, our youngsters to have de degrees, etc. We um, want them to have the best of life, nice cars, nice homes. Let's call it a better life. Uh -huh. But there's a deficit among our youngsters. Yes, yes. And um, if we don't want wake up as a church, you're going to lose them. Because number one, the school system and the people who teach them, uh, because you don't have much Christian schools, are teaching them all kinds of nonsense. We need to, we're thinking about it all today, that we need to band together and build good Christian institutions. I don't care what millions it costs, build it. <laughs> For the glory of God. Because the Lord showed me that um, I, I, I was resting last night. The Lord, dropped, I, I, the Lord was sharing something with me. I couldn't because I was on a different time zone since I came in yesterday. And, and he was saying to me that when you come to church, youngsters has a cell phone in their hand. Yeah. If I want to ask any one of these youngsters, do you have a download on your phone, maybe a youth Bible study or... Yeah. Have down a Sunday school lesson or something dealing with God, you'll find, I believe, within here we'll have next to zero because they deal with games, they deal with all kinds of trinkets, learn to outdo the, the different race and all kinds of things. Uh, we need to wake up as a church, and then when it comes to Sunday school, you have a download for Sunday school on the phone. That what they use. You know, when we come to youth service, the download. Uh, my, my daughter, uh, uh, Clarissa, she does with her young people in our church. And, and once ago, she was telling me before I got a hold of this that that's the way she does. And when she goes to, to, to youth uh, church, they, they use the phone, the Bible, everything. Everything is downloaded on the phone. And they're, they're more equipped. A long time ago, we said, memorize the scripture. Uh -huh. But now, you just do the pop, 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 the scripture comes up. They need to memorize it, but it's, right. there must be a method to get it done. Yes. And um, I believe that God wants us to, next year, to target young people in a different way. Amen. And I say to this church and to our church and to anyone who is here, we need to begin to target young people, otherwise we'll have, have churches filled with old people. Oh. And then that is it. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't have a few minutes to speak, but... I want to get this out. I'll finish the message on tomorrow morning <laughs> at our church. I, I, whatever the minutes are, I don't care about that. Because the Lord showed me strongly that what is happening, we are taking up a lot with people who are coming to church, those who have left, people this, people that. Big people who, who know the word of God. 
We engage with those guys when they when the ties in. Well, the frivolous things from last year. This year, yeah. we need to concentrate on building God's church. Amen. Yeah. More evangelism. Yeah. More programs in our schools. Programs to make young people realize that we too are on the cutting edge. Yes. Yeah. They, don't even, they don't even use chalk and board anymore in school. Oh, chalk and duster. Went to a place somewhere, you know, turn away all the dusters. Yeah. And asked them, there's any chalk? I said, there's no chalk. Yeah. Whiteboard. Oh, uh, I, I'm saying this, that yeah. the time we catch up with what is happening in church, um, and we catch up with the technological age, yeah. our children are gone. Oh, all right? Mm -hmm. So we got we to gotta follow you a, te te a, te a technological, I think you're the best technological pastor in the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I believe we need to do some seminars and get serious with apps that we make specifically for young people. Easy to understand. Something that we are able to touch young lives with. Because if I ask today, anybody in this church should be between um, 8 to 19 stand up. 8 to 19. 8 to 19. This all two churches together here. Nobody here. Three here? Three churches. Three churches. All right? Nobody 8 to 19 show up. By the way, in the church. RJ. RJ. Are you here? It's 8 to 19. Yes. That's okay. 8 to 19. 8 to 19. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Yes, it's coming. All right? So, so therefore, we need to not only keep church for big people yes. in the coming year, yes. we need to find a way to keep church for little people. Yes. Yes. And we can't keep the church the very same way. No, we can't do it. All right. Now we have a few minutes. And give the Lord we said to us. Um, now we're going to have prayer and fasting in our church uh, begin the next week um, for two weeks. We know about that tomorrow. Um, what God has been sharing with me for this year is a theme. The gospel of the kingdom manifested. That means next year, we're going to see the gospel of the kingdom we preach. There will be a manifesting power yes. of signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes. I'm understanding that God is beginning to stir us up and move in the marketplace, in the doctor's office. Make every place a church. Yes. Yes. Amen. Make every place a church. And now, I'm going to share with you a little while something called He would have passed them by. Let's say it together. He, he would, would have passed pass them by. by. Yes. Woo, powerful. <laughs> One more time. He, he would, would have passed pass them by. by. And we'll just go to um, uh, Mark 6. I'm going to just read this and then I'm going to trust you to go home and, and do the rest. 38. Hear what he says, Mark 6, 38. He says, um, and uh, Mark 6, verse 38. You know, I'm going to catch my bearings there. It's behind you. Yeah, it's behind you too. Okay, no problem. I don't want to look behind. I want to look <laughs> and he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the, gra on the green grass or on the ground. So that they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifty. And remember that. They're going to come back at that. And, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, she looked up to heaven and said, and blessed, uh, the, and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And they were, and they, they divided the two fish among them all. That means that was twelve people getting from that resource. Everyone see that? 42. 
and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up 12 baskets uh, full of broken pieces and of the fish and those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Immediately, he made his disciples get into the, sh the boat and, and go be um, before him to the other side to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. Mm -hmm. And after he had taken leave of them, he went on uh, the mountain to pray. And when Eve came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land, 48. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind and was against them, and about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Now, he meant to, to pass them by. The King James said, he would have passed them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried. For they all saw him, all saw him and were terrified. But immediately, he spoke to them and said, I'm not a ghost. Take heart in his eye. Do not be afraid. Oh my God. And he got into the boat. He jumped into the boat with them. And the wind ceased. Mm -hmm. And they were utterly astonished. For they did not understand about the loaves. And uh, their heart was hardened. He would have passed them by. Oh my God. Why? You see, he would have passed them by because they didn't understand about the loaves. Mm -hmm. That means a miracle that had just taken place, they didn't take it to heart. Mm -hmm. God has done lots of things for us in 2022. I want us to take it to heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our pastor said, God has been great to us, and we're not dead with the corona. Oh my God. If you didn't know you have purpose, that's something powerful to yes, know. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. God is not finished with you yet. Amen. So don't come tell me you don't know what you, you know, I don't know what God wants me to do. You better know. Amen. You understand, family? Amen. The fact you're here, just say I'm a pastor of purpose. Amen. Amen. The fact that you're here, and millions of guys say, I can't waste time. Yeah, right. He would have passed them by because the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, they never took it to heart. Oh, my God. Yeah. And many people are going to certain things in life and say, Pastor, I've been praying, Pastor, I pray. You know, I'm a prayer, Pastor, I give and I pray, Pastor, I pray, pray, give, and nothing happened. He says, because they didn't understand the man they were dealing with, the, 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 the miracle worker, the provider, yeah. the man who can do great things. Yeah. He says, he saw them there in their struggle yeah. and they uh, didn't believe wow. that Jesus can show up my God, yeah. my God. in a storm. My God. Yeah. 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 They believe the devil could show up in a storm. Oh, Jesus yeah. Yeah. He, they call a ghost. They just saw that in the midst of their impossibility, when they didn't have anything, Jesus showed up. Yes. But then Jesus was showing up then. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he would have passed them in their mess. Yes. Passed them in their difficulties. Okay. Passing ruin going nowhere. I would have never bothered with them because they're not learning anything. The church of today yes. must begin to learn. Yes. The church of today must begin to learn by experience. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. When something happened, learn from it. Yes. That's right, that's right. When you God has delivered you from cancer, learn from it. Yes. When God has delivered you from glaucoma, learn from it. When God leave up some of the things, they are, and something will just come and this. He said, My God, look at, he was delivered from this, and this killed him. Because your case. Yeah. He will have passed them by. 
they didn't recognize the God in the midst of us. That's right. Don't care what happened to you in the next year. Learn experiences from last year. Amen. From this year. Amen. That you know who your God is. And don't give up and don't give up. Our brother said the tree dropped on his on his shoulder, but he said he began to worship. Yes. Uh -huh. Then begin to cry, oh poor me. Mm -hmm. Because you know worship brings results. Yes. That's what it means. Yes. Learn from your last victory. Yes. Yes. God wants the church to grow up. Yes. Yes. Amen. Learn from your last victory. Yes. A quick point I want to draw with you. As Jesus asks these wonderful guys, what is the problem? They said they had uh, nothing to eat, mm -hmm. yeah. but a few uh, bananas and fishes. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ always show up when there's a problem. And there are limited resources. Yeah. And sometimes you have a big problem, but no money. Sometimes the doctor wants to help you. He can't do it because they don't have the facilities. He might know about heart, but there's no nothing to help you here. What are you going to do when there is problems, but little resources? Here, there was a big problem and little resources. But God didn't mind about the resources. Mm -hmm. Because he was a big God. Amen. He said, how much do you have? Mm -hmm. They brought the little they had to the Lord. And the Lord said to them, put it into my hand. Yes. Look at this. Hallelujah. When they put a little in, uh, in God's hand, God then multiplied Amen. in the hands of the disciples. And that's the reason I believe he would have passed them by because the little that they had or the little that they had in their hand, he began to multiply by 12. Amen. And he, they could see, he said, learn. He said to them, I just gave you an ABC course in miracle. He said, look at this. I'm going to give you guys a lesson. But he said their heart was hardened. They learned nothing. May God open the heart of the church that when God is doing something, we take it to heart. He then gave it to the 12 disciples. And I do a little mathematics if it's all of them. My brother will correct it when he comes out. <laughs> The idea was that, listen to those guys. One little meal, 12, 12 guys got, got at least they're going to eat, eat what they had in their hand and say at least the thing is multiplied. But listen, when the 12 of them, he asked them to put the people to sit down in 50 and 100. Yes. Look at that. Yes. It was very magical. Yes. Because each of these disciples, if they were gone to a group from their one hand, it multiplied 50 times. Yes. My God, my God. Still they learned nothing. From their own hand, if you went to the group of 100, it multiplied 100 times. And they learned nothing. Because they didn't realize it was a different day. They didn't realize it was a different season. They didn't realize it was now a season of miracles. They were still behind. They were looking in the natural. When God was looking and looking in the supernatural. We passed them by. I went to average this and I said each disciple and there were 5,000 people and Jesus didn't go around with them. The miracle happened in their hand. Jesus could have said to like the look on church. Come up here. Everybody be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Okay. Be healed. He could have uh, asked a little 
the other thing, be, be healed, be healed, be healed. But he didn't, he didn't get it to the miracle happen. He put it in the 12 guys' hand, and they became miracle yeah. workers. Hallelujah. And even during the church, God began to manifest his gifts to his people still a heart. I see some shallowness in Christianity. God does so many things to people and still they want to, to serve him now. They, they're good. They have all kind of philosophies now. Nothing root went down. If I, I average, if there were 5,000 people, each disciple had to touch 416 persons. That means the Lord says, you've got to learn this. That means each disciple gave to 416 in average. 416. And still, they learned nothing. They didn't realize that this wasn't the same day. They didn't understand there was a new day. Church, we must understand uh, this is a new day. We are facing a new year. But God is about to do some brand new miracle. That's right, that's right. They didn't understand. And I said, if every man bought his wife, we would have had uh, uh, approximately 10,000. If ever each, each person had one child, uh, approximately 15,000 people. Yeah. But each group had to be 50. It, was, it made it simple for these guys to see. 50, 100, the same model, mm -hmm. the Moses model. Yes. 50, yeah. 100. Sat down. Mm -hmm. Every time these guys go up there, oh the miracles happen. And I said, each woman, uh, a man brought one child, and there was no one child there. There's a, uh, oh, a child. Oh, my God. Each disciple would have served 1,250 times bread and fish. And that's why he will pass them by. Because they didn't understand it was a different day. Church of the living God, as we go into the new year, it's a different day. It's a different season. It's a time of miracle. It's a time when, when the kingdom of God is preached. Expect something. Get healing line. Get deliverance line. Amen. It's a different day. 1,000. 1,000. 250 people, each one of these guys touched approximately, and they did not recognize that miracle. There was provision, there was nothing, and God provided much for them. In our today's world, we find that we as Christians don't want to attempt anything great. Attempt great things, because we will see big miracles. <laughs> I was talking to someone today. Uh, put yourself in position for God to do great things or big things in your life. Be positioned. They, they were in position for God to do something big. I was saying that there was a problem in the Caribbean when there was no airlines running. We had to go to Miami to go where we have to go in the region. And we said, let's buy some. No. First I was dealing with a cargo plane. To deal with. I was saying, you need to move some services to the region. I was talking to someone. and said, well, things are difficult. How are we going to move the potato? And uh, the yam from down. And I said, let's, let's buy an airplane. Let's buy a cargo plane. Yes, Nobody in the Caribbean can buy a plane. Yes. All these hundred islands come going to buy one cargo plane. Huh? Yes. And one man in America have 20 and 100 and 150? Yeah. It's how you think. Yeah. Get in position. I was talking to a guy about, I'm thinking now, they are going to buy some aircraft to do transportation. He said, boy, I don't believe people don't give any money into that. I said, well, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you understand that, Tommy? Yeah. If you don't put yourself in a position for miracles, you'll see none. We always go to Miami and go down the road if we don't do something about it. If we don't get our own cargo plane, we're going to rot in our own countries, rot in Dominica, to play stone with, with avocados in, in uh, St. Vincent, uh, uh, yeah. choke up in the air down in, in Grenada, yeah. uh, roll on dead back in the field. Yeah. Uh, when we could benefit, 
We dread. Amen. I mean, we have no cargo plans to go in a place. We have no plans to buy. And everybody looking to each other. He ain't buying it. I ain't buying none. And all of us in the same mess. Attempt something great. This was a massive miracle. All we have to have is a faith that the little thousand dollars. I believe I, if, if we have a faith tonight. Oh well, we could pick up one aircraft tonight. Yeah, How much is it? Yeah, 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 How much yeah, is the aircraft? Yeah, Ten yeah. million. How much we raise tonight? Yeah, Maybe one million. Yeah. Or oh, we could raise fifty cents. We could win one million, we could win fifty cents, it's for the forty million year crowd. Yes. And because we give it in the Lord's hand. Yes. Hallelujah. You see what happened? Listen to me. You can't stop me from thinking this way. Amen. One day I went to a pastor's house, he it was not completed, and I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass your whole house for you. Yes. How much is it he says? I said, I'm gonna tell you when I'm finished. When I finished, I told him I'm free. He said, I don't like to take things from people. Oh, long message that you preaching in the pulpit. He <laughs> said, I said, it is free. It is free. Free. And we will be believing God for a tent. Next day, Sunday, somebody called him from the city. I heard you guys are looking for a tent. Oh, uh, here, here in the Virgin Islands, we have a ten poles and all and everything. Um, how many points are free? I said, what? Free. And you didn't preach back. From that day, you didn't have we have never went out of tents. <laughs> never went out of tents. But I got the tent from giving something. And when that seed was planted, whoever. It was a sweet one. It was uh, Kenneth Copeland was talking about having a, a jet that he had, had now had two. I said, what must I do with this? He said, give it to Crippa Dollar. And then Crippa Dollar now had two jets. He had someone, who must I give? Give it back to Copeland. Copeland said, well, I have two jets, but I'm going to take another jet. He said, okay. Tell Copeland, give it to I think a guy called Butler or something like that. He gave it, give it to the guy called Butler. And God bless him with, with the same gift twice. Oh, yeah. Pastor his hand twice. Yeah. He said, now we have a bigger jet than he had at that time. And he said, I want to go long distance. I just borrowed a couple jet. Do they have a great relationship? Yes. If these guys go have jets among themselves, I mean, all these islands, oh, well, come on. We could do something good. Yeah. Yeah. High loaves and two small fish. Yeah. What are they mm. among so many? He said, gather up the fragments that, that remain. I believe when we begin to collect from the plane, it was like Moses' tabernacle. We have too much money now. Ah, uh, not for the tabernacle, no more money. Uh, we begin to collect from the, from the, from the, she, the, 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 the uh, fleet of, of aircraft. He says here, gather up all the fragments yeah. that nothing remains. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll preach a little more smoother. Yeah. <laughs> Gather up all the fragments. Yeah. Why? Because he said, Gather up all the fragments. Then he didn't say, Throw the rest in the garbage. No. <laughs> there was something important with the miracle food. Yeah. He said, This didn't come by you guys just being happy and God bless you with much. You just throw it away. Share it into the missions, yeah. give it to the poor. Do something with the blessing of the Lord. Amen. God want to show them this. I am El Shaddai. Yeah. Everyone say El Shaddai. El Shaddai. I am more oh, than yeah. enough. Amen. He didn't only meet the 15,000 people with what he had. He made sure he overdue. God is a God. I know there's a, oh, something for that. There's a Jehovah overdue. Oh, what is that? Jehovah overdue. They're gonna overdo it. They're gonna get the. Uh, they gonna be something called Jehovah overdue. More than enough. More than enough. I gonna get. I gonna get the. Um, that Jehovah overdue. All right, gosh, uh, Jehovah overdue. That was just like that. Right the thing is, God showed up. He provided for them when they had nothing. He showed them, and God's about to do this in the next year. Your plans to build. Plans to buy a home, 
Plans to build churches. Plans to do open new businesses. Whatever you have, put it in the hand of the Lord and say, Lord God, you are El Shaddai. The planes are coming. The the um the the the, the, the real estate are coming in. Just you know, just, I just have this. El Shaddai. The God of more than enough. Put your hands together for El Shaddai. God bless you.